will say it too after I introduce other people here. You know, we skipped last year because we this the boys was not open at the time and kind of missed that. But we're going to go back now, and I'm glad to know that Destiny's is serving a fine meal. I think it was a delightful meal. Yeah.
Thank you. You know, if you want to have someone give accolades about your brother, you pick the wrong person. <laughs> this is my brother. <laughs> I'm Donna McMeans. Some of you might remember me as Donna Lutz. And I am an all-class brunch virgin. <laughs> and it's been a long time since I could say that. <laughs> if you have followed me at all on Facebook, I lost my contact earlier this week, and I'm having a hard time seeing, so just wanted to warn why some of this might not work out quite so well. If you don't remember me, because some of these classes predate 1970 quite a bit, you might remember our house. It was on the corner of Sharon Road and Lake Ross in Forest Park, and we had a big bay window that my mother filled with glass bottles. And I know a number of people have gone by and said, in that house. That was us, right across from the Forest Park Library. Uh, about six years ago, five or six years ago, I came back to Green Hills. I'm in Columbus right now, and I had just published my first book. And Green Hills Library had invited me to come back and speak to the library. I drove down from Columbus. It was pouring down rain. And I got here a little early, and I thought, you know, I'm going to go over and see the old high school, which to me is the one, I mean, that was junior high school, the white community building. So I went back to the high school, and I was really kind of shocked because it wasn't Green Hills High School anymore. Why that word never made it up to Columbus. And it was such a sad feeling to see that part of your past was kind of vanishing. And of course, all, all of us have experienced that. So I was so glad that when I attended a uh, high school reunion, which was another first a couple years ago, I found out about the Alumni Association. I had not realized you existed until then. And that there existed a room full of memorabilia so that everything had disappeared. And part of that memorabilia was a Hall of Fame. Um, I assume that that was to honor people that had graduated from Green Hills and gone beyond the norm. And when you think about beyond the norm, I think of my brother. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> That could go a lot of ways. <laughs> Maybe two years ago or so, Dennis invited me down from Columbus to attend a football game at the University of Cincinnati. Uh, he was being honored as being the, if I can get this correctly, uh, ROTC graduate from UC that had attained the highest rank. And for this honor, he got to officiate point toss at the football game. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was pretty cool. But I figured if UC was going to honor him in that fashion, then he would be an appropriate candidate for the high school Hall of Fame. So I found out how you did the nomination, and I went ahead and sent that in. My pages are sticking. Here we go. I have a list of his military accomplishments, and that was compliments of the Army Reserve that had printed up a, his military resume for a change of command ceremony of the 359th Signal Brigade. But it lacks, as you might say, a personal touch. So I've kind of filled in some of the details that maybe Uncle Sam didn't know. Uh, in 1964, I think, oh, it's still there. I had something that got a lot of silence. In 1964, my parents moved here from Towson, Maryland, brought the whole family over from Towson, Maryland, to Forest Park. My brother started as a freshman then at Green Hills High School while I went ahead to the community building. It's not always easy to make a move like that when you leave where your, all your childhood memories and friends and come to a new state. But we managed. We managed. And we made new friends and found our way. I know that Dennis played a lot of tennis. And I think you were in the chess club. 
I don't remember. Um, but I think he was in the chess club. But what I mostly remember, now it did go out. But that's okay, because you know, I can clear <laughs> um, What I mostly remember is, to my extreme mortification, I remember him taping Captain Klutz with two Ks on the family car. <laughs> Even back then, he had, he had thought about a military career, I suppose. Either that or Star Trek. <laughs> I'm not too sure. Upon graduation from Green Hills, Dennis attended the University of Cincinnati to study electrical engineering. And while he was there, he joined the ROTC and belonged to their show marching contingent, the Persian Rifles. I remember my younger sister Sharon always stitching his sweatshirts uh, with the Persian Rifles logo whenever possible. I, however, was the hippie child, and I wouldn't have touched those things with a 10-foot pole. <laughs> but looking back, I have to admit that during those troubled and violent times of the Vietnam War, I think belonging to ROTC took a lot of determination and courage, because it wasn't a popular choice back then. At least it wasn't in Ohio State, where I went. After graduation in 1973, he was commissioned as a lieutenant in the Signal Corps, U.S. Army, and served as a battalion communications officer in Fort Knox, Kentucky. I believe that was the year as well that he married the wonderful and fabulous Helen Price, which means <laughs> she made sister marks their 40th anniversary, which is an achievement in and of itself. In 1976, he transitioned into the U.S. Army Reserve and continued to serve the country in that capacity. He got his MBA from Xavier University and then moved to Rochester, New York for employment. While there, he worked at Eastman Kodak, earned his master's degree in electrical engineering, and graduated from the U.S. Army War College. I didn't even know such a thing <laughs> He rose through the ranks to eventually become a Chief Star General and in that capacity served for 15 months in Kuwait. This is someone I recall that used to get motion sickness, riding the Ferris wheels as a little kid. It's but now he has stories of making these military landings where you come like straight down, um, kind of like a stomach curling um, mission, and I, I just find that amazing. Obviously, he returned safe and sound. Throughout all this, he and Helen have managed to raise three really great kids, and now he has six grandchildren. Now, before I let him come up here and refudiate all my <laughs> stories and correct my errors, I'd like to thank the Alumni Association for allowing me the honor to nominate, with great love and admiration, my big brother, Dennis Lutz, for the Hall of Fame.
college or you did what you did, that we had the Vietnam War really ratcheted up at the time. It was the, the year of the Tet Offensive. And stumbled my way through college. Uh, I think stumbled is pretty accurate. I got into the, uh, the military through ROTC and uh, spent a number of years in the military. And then uh, I actually joined the Army Reserve because I needed a part-time job. And I went, hey, this is pretty good. I kind of enjoy this. And so I stayed in forever. <laughs> and uh, I uh, eventually, uh, through uh, circumstances, uh, was promoted to general officer and retired in 2009. So it hasn't been that long. And I'll just tell you that you you do these, you are the summation of all your events and circumstances that happen over time. So going to Green Hills, uh, in, in what I might call my formative years, uh, these those years and my, my years in, in college and the University of Cincinnati, really set the stage for what success that I've enjoyed. And the success really hasn't been the fact that uh, I achieved the rank of uh, two-star general. The success was being with great people and uh, trying to do good things with great people. And that I learned from Green Hills, and I learned from the University of Cincinnati. And I, and I say them both because they're kind of intertwined. And uh, so that's what I enjoyed doing. I also worked at the, uh, Kodak. For any of you who read the papers today, they, are, they did a lot better before digital imaging came out. <laughs> and, and, and there I was the uh, director for development of digital cameras. So. You know, maybe we were too successful. <laughs> um, I, uh, uh, when, when I got the call, a letter and a call, it seems to me, uh, t about this ceremony, I, uh, I said, will you come down? I laughed. I said, of course I'm going to come down. Anybody that wants to induct me into anything, <laughs> I'm on my way, because that just never happens. So thank you. Thanks for making this happen. It wouldn't happen without you all being here. Well, I, yeah, the Alumni Association is a collection of all of the parts. It's not a, uh, it, 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 it takes two or three people to make it happen. Uh, so it, it takes someone like Bobby to call you up and say, and Dennis, I need this picture. Uh, you know, to, to make it happen. But uh, to make it great, it's a summation of everybody here. And so thank you for taking the time. Uh, thank you for inviting me to do this. I appreciate it very much. And uh, I guess that's all I have to say. Normally in the military, I'd close the speech with God bless America, but God bless America. <laughs>
Thank you all for coming and making this a success once again. I appreciate it. 